live the life beyond the boundaries we set on ourselves. To live and to run boundless. To be inspired, to achieve, to overcome the mountaintop in our life. Embrace the journey, become boundless. Hello, family. Uh, welcome to the, the, the fifth uh, or the number five, uh, number five episode of Live, Run, Boundless podcast. Now, today, my guest is someone I just just met you know, a couple months ago. Uh, we met to uh, met to a good friend of, of the both of us, Mr. Daniel Smith, or AKA uh, Mr. San Diego Trail Runner, uh, AKA so the Godfather. Huh? Yeah, huh? AKA the Godfather. The Godfather. Okay, yeah, I got that. I got it. I got it. Yeah. So as we met at uh, Baby Badwater, um, the second annual race, Baby, uh, Baby Badwater, up in the desert. I think it was a little over a month ago, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um. So Daniel had told me about you. Damn, tell you got you got an interview to do, to do, you know. Um, and he just like ran 146 miles on a treadmill or something like that. But well, we would yeah. get it down later. We get it yeah. Later. yeah. And so I was thinking to myself, I said, what? That's crazy. Um, I could barely run like three miles on a trail mill, you know, to stay focused. On trail <laughs> trail, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I went up to you. I would like the Lady Lizard Bar and uh, right. introduce myself. And we just start communicating on Instagram. You know? Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but um, I want to share this story with you because I thought this was super cool. Um, so a little backstory was obviously I knew a baby Badwater too, because of our mutual friend, Daniel, who I love, I do yeah. is freaking amazing. So yes. yeah. I wanted to go out there to support him, but also, you know, I wanted to see a lot of the local runners and a lot of the local trail groups. Uh, I knew a lot of them would out, be out there and I haven't gotten the opportunity to meet everybody. Yes. So I knew that would be also a really good place to say hello to a lot of folks. Yes. So I told my brother about that. Uh, you know, that event, and he had just literally been a week or two into running, yeah. coming back into running. So he was like, yeah, let's go. I'm all, yeah, it's going to be in the desert. It should be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. So we start running that race. And again, he hasn't, you know, ran in, in, a, in a while. So the half marathon in itself was going to be challenging. Okay, yeah. um, but obviously it was triple digits weather. I don't know what city Daniel had us in, but we were like in the middle of the <laughs> desert of a city I never heard of, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I may be remembering it a little worse, but the yeah. sand felt like you're running through a beach. It was like <laughs> thick, thick <laughs> sand, right? Water. So we were both miserable, you yeah. know, making that run. Yeah. And as we were coming to the finish line, you know, I could tell my brother was, 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 was beat and like ready for this to end. I was tired myself and we saw you, um, coming down the corner, just straight <laughs> hyping us dancing. And I don't know if you remember, but my brother saw you and he started getting energy and started dancing too. So you guys are having a dance battle and I'm like, Oh yeah, this is, this is what I'm talking about. So, so literally since then, man, like I saw you afterwards just doing that for everybody, hyping, you know, like totally, you know, supporting people, giving shout outs. Um, so I knew it would just be awesome when I actually got a chance to sit down and talk with you. So I wanted to share that with you. I thought that was really cool. And I know he appreciated it. And so did I. Okay. I, 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 I thank you very much. You know, I, that's something I enjoy doing. I do like, you know. Uh, just really helping everybody else out, you know. I know how it is, you know, being out there, you know. And, yeah. Uh, I'm running like that, you know. You, come yep, you did it for us. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a beat down, so trying to, trying to bring a little, little energy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I enjoy doing it. Yeah, so. And that's why I do all the time with, with the why, you know. And uh, I, I'll try to, you know. Give you some Keep it up, man. It, it, it gives us energy. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Good. So that was cool. Yeah, we're bringing in another problem. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, but no. Well, if nobody don't know, um, I'm going to introduce yourself. I want to welcome our next guest. Uh, we're calling Mr. Hector or H Rod. H Rod? Or like yeah. H Rod? Yeah. <laughs> Rodriguez. Uh, coming all the way from San Diego. <laughs> yep. Or I'll call me the Amazon delivery guy, you know. Um, well, we get to the Amazon Amazon stuff later too. 
And I look yeah. to learn more about that. Um, yeah, but my first question is, Hector, tell me about your life growing up. You know, um, did you grow up in San Diego or, 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 or what? what? Yeah, I pretty much uh, – I had a, a blessed upbringing. Mm -hmm. uh, mom and dad, uh, I got two sister, brother. Yeah. Uh, grew up in Chula Vista, um, pretty yeah. much in the same house the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, had a great, great group of friends who I'm still friends with today, um, all from just kind of the, the, the neighborhood down there. Um, so just just an awesome upbringing. Uh, Chula Vista, San Diego has, has is home, will always be home. I don't care where I live. <laughs> that, that, that's my home. So, okay. all right. um, yeah. Awesome. Right. No complaints there. Okay, that, that, that's good, you know. Yeah, and then not too many people who I meet directly from San Diego, you know. Like, yeah. they from different places, you know. They're just yeah. like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, there's a lot of uh, transplants, a lot of people. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, dude, or the military as, as yourself, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so yeah, but, but I definitely enjoy being in San Diego. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, me yeah. people like you. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, so um, like growing up, like um, being like into sports, you know, activities and stuff like that, would be something that you always have done in the growing up as a kid. Yeah, yeah, like uh, in my high school years, I played a lot of basketball uh, and soccer uh, were probably like my two sports that I spent the most time with. Yeah. And then once high school finished, I kind of I don't know if I've, I've played soccer since or yeah, barely yeah. Uh, every now and then we'll shoot the basketball, <laughs> but it, it flipped to, um, I did a little bit of boxing for a year or two, nice. um, but then it flipped to like doing uh, half marathons, marathons and that yeah. kind of stuff. Yes. And that pivoted to, well, let's go swim in the ocean. Let's go swim in the pool. Let's okay. get a bicycle. Nice. And so I started doing triathlons. Okay. No. Um, and I did that. I think I, I don't remember how long I did that, but I kind of like went in and out of running and triathlons, maybe mm. all the way to like 2015, 2016, yes. 2017, maybe. Okay. Um, and then I kind of stopped uh, all of it yeah. uh, for the most part and would just kind of run here and there until uh, basically 2018 towards the end of that year when I, I came across David Goggins. Okay, okay. So you came across his book, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a couple months before that, I had uh, went out with my brother um, to go support him during a 50 oh. mile oh, okay. trail oh. run in Big Bear, California. Oh, nice. Um, and in all of our previous like events, we yeah. always were able to make cutoffs. Yes. Um, you know, so it was crazy to go there uh, and see him struggling bad wow. and then get on the course with him to like yeah. try to fuel him up kind of like you did for us yes, yes. and and i was unsuccessful and he ended up dnfing oh. um so then in my head i was like wow oh, yeah. you know like he actually did an event that was so hard he literally had to quit and i saw him he was given his all oh. and he was like like he was just beat up yeah, the yeah, course yeah. beat him up man so that stuck in my head with, with being in Big Bear, it's really beautiful up there. Lots of trees, a lot of nature and all that, you know, vibe. And it just stuck in my head. Okay. So then when I came across Goggins yeah. and his podcast and his yeah. book, yeah, 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 it just, uh, plus that memory, yeah. it was like, okay, yeah. starting today, yeah. we're going we gonna to change the game. We're going to use these tools yeah. and we're going forward. Okay. I haven't looked back since. All right, that's nice. So that was at the beginning of his journey, or he was already like well known, you know, where the where um David Goggin had a DNF. It was like the Yeah, I think he was known uh probably in the ultra community. Uh and he had gotten some publicity, but I think once he did uh I think it was the second interview with Joe Rogan in that book. Yeah. Uh, I think he blew up um, okay. and yeah. got super well known, and it, he super uh, influenced me. That's for okay. sure. It was around that that end of twenty eighteen. Yes. Yeah, so, so, what way did he influence you? I mean, 
you would go through some, some challenges in your life that you've been wanting to overcome or, or what? You know? uh, I think for me, going into that second half of the year, um, there was a couple of different things. I was, I was working for Amazon okay. um, and I was traveling a lot. Yes. Um, and I think I was allowing myself to, you know, sit at the hotel, you know, eat burgers every night, yeah. eat fries, watch basketball games, you know, and just, just kind of just do that. Right. And I started yeah. noticing myself gain weight. I wasn't yeah. working out. I wasn't eating the best cause I'm, I'm eating, you know, like yeah. the bar type food. Yeah. I'm having beers while I'm eating it. So I was noticing my health. I was much heavier than I think I was like 228 pounds at my peak. Oh, wow. Plus in my personal life um, with close, close family, close friends, I started noticing people mentally. I, I don't know if I want to say mentally breaking, but just mentally mm. not being the strongest mm. yeah. uh, and making bad decisions mm. and um, just making poor health yeah. decisions. Mm. So I think, Thinking of all of that, knowing my lifestyle was not doing the best, yes. seeing people not doing well around me, and it felt like the walls were closing mm -hmm. in, yeah, yeah. I was like, I got the tools, I got this book, okay, and now I'm going to make sure that I become the mentally strongest person for my family. Okay. that I can be. Nice. And that's kind of what started because if it, it, it's going to be a bad deal if people close mm -hmm. to me are not doing well mentally and then I'm failing mentally, yes. you know, that was going to be a bad deal. So okay. uh, I made sure that, that that can't happen and it doesn't happen and it won't happen. Okay. Um, okay. And that was kind of the motivation to get going. Yeah. Cause uh, somebody had to, uh, I guess, be that, 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 uh, gleam of hope or to be that difference, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Too. And, and you want to lead by example, like you want to, to not, you, you if you're going to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Oh, yeah, they're definitely. They're definitely. So I believe in that. And yeah. that's <laughs> what I have done okay. since. And um, anybody who's in my circle, yeah. I think can vouch for, for the effort. Yeah. I've had a lot of failure since, yeah, well, but I, okay. I've had efforts. <laughs> And definitely, you know, life gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna fail. We don't have failures in life, you know. Uh, but the key is just uh, learning from it, and just really taking the necessary step to overcome it, you know. You know. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I was telling my 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 good buddy just two days ago, who's gonna go uh, do a hundred mile attempt this weekend, um, <laughs> that you know, like let's embrace failing. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it, it's a great tool. Yeah. When we're putting ourselves out there yeah. and if people see us train hard and win, yeah. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know, then it's like, it shows that working hard yeah. leads to success in the challenges. Oh, yeah. But then also you work hard and you fail. Yeah. To me. Okay. That yeah. just means I took a step back yeah. and we got some more work to do and mm -hmm. we're going to go back and we're going to attempt it again. Oh yeah, yeah. And then it, when it, you get yeah. that win again, then it's it's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, might it, even it, be more awesome. Yeah, this is like my first trail marathon, like in 2012, I believe. You know, um, um, I know I didn't get a DNF, but it was like man, it, it's hurt. It break break me down. You know, I like um, now I hit the wall, cramp up, cramp up, and all that stuff. You know, yeah. You know, my say, but I gotta try it again. You know, so I, yeah, so, yeah. So to learn from it. Uh, train, yeah. you know, and do all the necessary stuff, the, the stuff of things need to do. So I got to have a better outcome the next time, you know. I do, do the and that's it. And you wouldn't have done that had you not had that struggle or hit that wall that you just had. So to yeah, me, yeah. failing is good. Like yeah. we can't be yeah. afraid to fail. You're not I'm good gonna at the fail moment. again. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, I promise you, I'm gonna fail. <laughs> and I got the moment, you know. But like I say, but you look back on and reflect. On, on, on that that run on life, you know, and look back on it. So that I needed to go through that, you know, I needed to go through that struggle, you know, to able to become better. You know, yes, it's, it's definitely. Yeah, yeah, and then when you have kids, um, like I want my kids to see me fail. I want yeah. them to yeah, yeah, 
see me fail, see me not give up, see yeah. me continuously wake up early and go for runs and say like, Hey, I'm, I'm coming back. Okay. You're going to see dad train every day. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to walk in the garage. You're going to see me in the treadmill. You're going to see uh, me in the mountains <laughs> because dad is going to try again okay. and maybe he fails again, but I yeah. promise you girls, he's yeah. going to, he's going to eventually, you know, get a win. <laughs> I promise you that. Yeah. So I, I see it as a tool for, teaching my girls as well that uh, nice. I think it's going to be okay for them to fail because I think some of our best lessons are learned when we fail. So, well, you know, yeah, definitely, you know, as, as, as kids, we don't think that, you know, so we think feeling is bad. Right. As has said, uh, some of us, well, some of us learned that feeling is okay to fail, you know? Yep. But, you long come back. Yeah. Long as you don't quit. Yes. yes. Then failing is okay in my book. No, no, no doubt. No doubt. Um, and that leaned into what was your why? What keep you going? You know, well, we have days that you want to probably give up or quit. What's your why? You know, um, I think now my why is I, I think the world is becoming a tougher place, yeah. um, just in general. So I think, uh, maybe more than ever, I got to show discipline, show relentlessness, yeah. show hard work, yeah. show, uh, you know, all of those traits yes. um, to my girls and to my wife and to, to constantly reinforce the importance of mental toughness yeah. and taking the hard route and, doing things that aren't easy, doing things that are uncomfortable, yeah. staying out of comfort zone. So I'm living it. I live it every single day. Yeah. Yeah. If you would have shadowed me, you would have seen me around my neighborhood for over 10 miles already, just <laughs> taking a stroll. Okay. In, yeah. I'm, I'm right now I'm in Arizona. So right now it's super okay. hot outside. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm out there working, seeing the way the world is just becoming a tougher place. Yeah. I think it's more important now, uh, than in recent years for my girls to, to be mentally tough, yeah. to do all the things that I believe in, to be disciplined, to, to push, to stay out of comfort zones. And, you know, and for them, it could be in school, like to, to keep striving to learn, to keep, yes. uh, I believe in, in, in the two words, never peak. So like, yeah. just keep okay. pushing, keep being yeah. better. Yeah. The same way they see dad not giving up yes. uh, in these crazy adventure challenges he's putting himself in. Yes. Yes. Uh, my goal is for them to take the principles, which would be the discipline of doing it every day, the determination, the relentlessness, yes. the never give up, the, the dealing with the discomfort, the dealing with the pain, uh, and kind of take that and take what they can and apply it to being the best at whatever they want to go for. Yes. Yes. And so my why is the being that example, that kind of what I said at the beginning is yeah. walking the walk yeah, yeah. or is talking the talk, but yeah, it's also yeah. walking the walk. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And they're never going to say their dad don't work. I promise <laughs> you that you're going to see me working always. Okay. That, 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 that's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you said a great example. So I try. Yeah. So what are your why? What's, what motivate you to do 140-something miles on a treadmill? Like, uh, what's that? What's, what, tell, tell me about that. Tell us what that. You know? <laughs> so I had a, a buddy tell me, I had never heard of Aravipa, uh, which is this uh, really popular, I'm learning, um, running yeah. uh, event yeah. company. And he was like, hey, I'm going to do, uh, and this was kind of at the start of uh, all the, you know, pandemic and the COVID stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, I'm going to do this event. It's not in person, but it's virtual. It's a virtual, Aravipa virtual strong event. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to do 100 miles. Um, and at the time, I was going to go support him, but I think he ended up getting kind of sick yes. um, during the race. But nonetheless, uh, he had put the bug in my, in my head. To where I was like, well, I'm supposed to go do a uh, 100K Leona Divide uh, up, I think it's outside of LA, okay. yeah. race that got canceled. So I was like, well, I'll do this instead. And as the week went by, I, it basically turned into, 
uh, me going from doing 62 miles on a Saturday and then another 38 on a Sunday to, yes. to get the 100 together, I was like, I'm going to just go for it in one shot. Okay. And I was successful, surprisingly so, that I was able to get third place male in that race. Right. So then um, then I had seen, um, I don't know if you follow like Jesse Itzler, Mark Brown, Chad Wright, and those guys. Let me name sound familiar. Yes. Okay. Those guys are freaking awesome yeah. rock stars in my book. Um, okay. And I had saw that Chad Wright had just did a last person standing event. Oh, wow. Um, which is basically, th there's different form formats of it. Yeah. So I saw that this Aravipa company was going to do another one that allowed me to do it virtually so I could do it in the home, you know, in, in my garage at home. Okay. And basically the rules for the race were you need to do one mile yeah. every 15 minutes mm -hmm. until there's one person left. Oh, wow. Um, so if I ran a mile within 10 minutes, then I got a five minute break, oh, but at, yeah, yeah. at the 15 minute mark, I had to be up and ready to go. So I think yeah. it started at 8am. So at yeah. eight fifteen, I had to be ready to go eight thirty, eight forty five, <laughs> nine, nine fifteen, and so on. Wow. So I knew that I could do a hundred miles yeah. in under 20 hours. Cause I had just done it a couple months earlier. Yeah. Okay. So I knew that if I could at least get to hundred miles, I get top 10 in the race. Yeah. At least I felt confident. Yeah. Um, so I didn't go with a plan of doing 146, but yeah, yeah. it just worked out that I was feeling really good a <laughs> lot of the race and I just didn't want to quit oh, as well, long I, as I felt good. Yeah, but I wanted to go. So I ended up, uh, again, my girls were there. Yeah. Uh, I had a, one of my good friends was there. I had some family there. So okay. I had a lot of support. Oh, um, and like, hopefully, um, if you were to talk to my wife, my daughters, yeah, yeah, yeah. my buddy, my sister, like, hopefully they saw me yeah. and could feel very proud okay. yeah. of my effort. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just like another example of leading yeah. by example of just yeah. give it your all. Yeah. Put yourself out there. I didn't win it. I failed. Yeah, yeah. But I gave it my all. And that's, yeah, that's, that's what my belief that's, is. I mean, that's a feat. I mean, to do that, you know, it's you went like, I need sleep for me, like, for what? 30 some hours? Uh, how long went I, in the I think it was somewhere between. So I think I went 36, 37 hours uh, of nonstop running. Nonstop. And then I woke up at 6 a.m. So, oh. so it was plus two more hours. So I think I went like 30, you know, uh, 38, 39 hours and no yeah. sleep. Okay, man. Wow. That, that's, that's, just cra that's crazy. You know, <laughs> we got a lot of power up here, man. I'm telling you, we don't even know. Yeah, I, I, I know. I mean, I probably didn't fall asleep on the running. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm much props to you to decide to take on that challenge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I speak of that challenge. What are some of the major obstacle hills that you, you had to overcome um, so far in your life and so far in your journey that you've been on? You know, that one that probably that stuck out to you the most. Um, uh, I guess I could, I could pivot back to, I, like, there's certain people, man, that I just steal from, like I steal motivation, fuel, inspiration. And a lot of these people are local and you know them, uh, yeah. to be honest with you. Okay. But, um, I heard, uh, Chad Wright, uh, who's this ultra runner, Navy SEAL dude, um, awesome guy. He made a comment, uh, and I think he puts on a shirt. It says, be hard when it gets hard. Yeah. Okay. And to me, that's like a mantra that just sticks in my head. Yeah. 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 So, uh, basically what I do with that is, uh, for the last, I don't know, six months, like this mm. has been the, some of the toughest times for any of us, uh, in, yeah. you know, in our generation. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So I have found that, that my way for working through it was taking everything that life was throwing at us. Yes. And I started adding even more of my own. Okay. I started getting even crazier with my challenges. Yeah. Doing ultras every month, doing okay. hundred miles, yeah. doing Goggins challenge, yeah. doing yeah. 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 triathlons, okay. uh, doing miles, monthly challenge, elevation challenges, yeah. hill repeat challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like I created my obstacles. Okay. I, 
Yeah. I took what life had and I added a whole crap load more. <laughs> and I was like, I can handle even more. Let's go. Okay. Then. Yeah. And so that's kind of like, that's, it's, it's, it, I don't know. It builds confidence. Yeah, it makes you, you yeah. like not scared because you're yeah. going like, I'm taking what life's throwing at me. Yeah. People are scared right now. Yeah. And I'm going to add all of this other stuff to even put more pressure on myself and make it more difficult yeah, yeah. and make it more challenging. Yeah. And I'm going to succeed with getting through it all. Okay. then. Oh, and so that's like, like this six months has been challenging for me as well. Like the, yeah. it's been tough and I've, thrown more on me. So, um, okay. yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, okay. it's, yeah. it's the way I operate now. Well, okay. so, uh, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's a, it's a pretty crazy way of think, thinking or doing it. Yeah. yeah that, but that definitely works for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So a fine way to push yourself, challenge yourself in, in, in a whole different way, you know? Yeah. So. I yeah. Me. I believe in the saying, it's like you, um, you find, you either find struggle, pain, yeah. or discomfort, yes, or struggle, pain, and discomfort finds you. Yeah. Okay. So, like, yes. I'm always looking for different battles. Yeah. Um, yeah. To just go after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the definitely, you know, that that's where we're growing. You know, it just, uh, just, uh, yep, being tested. You know. Yes. And there you go. So, like, why, why, why you want to beat, run, run up, run up some crazy hills? You know, and, you know. All right, just why we put yourself do that pain and agony. You there know? you go. I know. Well, but just, that right there, like yeah. when you're in your 50k, your 50 miler, and yeah. you're dead tired, yeah, and you're like, damn it, I got to get up that mountain still. I know. I got nothing left in my legs. <laughs> then the voices start going like, you can quit. You can yeah, go yeah. back to the aid station. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then another voice goes. Yeah. I can dig deep and I can get up that mountain. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. that to me, so there's a lot of, I have one of my best friends who, I don't know if he remembers, he told me this, but he goes like, what you do, it's just running <laughs> and it sticks to me. Yeah. And I get that there's a lot of people who see running as just running. Yeah. 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 But what you just explained, yeah. I've also had, you know, similar situation where I'm like, how the hell am I going to do this? Yeah, yeah. But you can take, when you go and you yeah. figure out how you get up the hill, yeah. then the next time in your regular life, you get yeah. that whisper in your ear saying, yeah. you need to quit, you need to do yeah. that. Yeah. Then you go, well, last time I heard this, I was on the trail and I pushed through it yeah. and I was able to finish yeah. and get yeah. up that mountain. Yeah. And so then it becomes training for life. It yeah, becomes, it you take those tools that yeah. you learn from running yeah. and with the giving up and the, that, that yeah. voice that just yeah. wants you yeah. to just stop and get comfortable yeah. and you take it to your personal life too. Oh yeah, the definitely. No, it definitely helped me in my personal life, you know, that the years and not giving up and sticking with it, you know. I see you moving. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I see it. I see it. I see it on your profile. <laughs> oh right, right, right. thank you, you know. Yeah, so just just gratitude. Just gratitude that able to do it, you know. That we yeah. able, to, able to do what we do. Yeah. 100%. So, but yeah. Well and with all of that, the things that you are doing you definitely need a support team around you. You know, you talk about your family, you know, your wife, your two girls, and you say you mentioned like your wolf pack team. That, yeah. That your family also, you know, and uh, just uh, a lot. Of, so how had they supported you in doing what you're doing right now? Man, I'll say this, that I got an unbelievable wife uh, that knows uh, I'm a little off the rocker and she just <laughs> supports me and she gives me, you know, the time to go out and okay. test myself every yeah. day. Uh, okay. So I love her to yeah. death for that. Yeah. Um, so she's amazing. My girls are huge uh, supporters. Um okay. Uh, I got family members, my brother, my sister, my yeah, uncle, they're, yeah. they're crazy too. <laughs> but what's been really, really cool is um, since the pandemic kind of started, um, <clears throat> I've really, I think, I think going into the pain cave, I call it, uh, is that, that when you get uh, into those tough zones, like you just talked about when you're like, how am I going to get up this hill? Yeah. Uh, I think you come out that cave with a new set of eyes. Yes. So where instantly I can see you mm. pumping me and my brother up when you don't even know us and know I love that dude. He's awesome. 
I could see Daniel Smith yeah. out at the mid, dragging a hundred plus people out to the middle of the desert and not make a dime uh, yeah. and just put us all through that just yeah. for the love of the community. And yeah. I can just know yeah. Yeah. that I love that dude. Yeah. Uh, and there's been so many people that I've come across. Um, and that's what I call the wolf pack. Okay. Um, okay. Is it's just, it's become this community of people oh, yeah. that I've just connected with on yeah. Instagram. And I think yeah. they've connected with me yeah, and we all just, freaking support each other yeah, yeah. our conversations yeah. are normal to us but are probably not normal to yeah. most people we're talking about doing 100 mile runs yeah, yeah. i got a friend in colorado who like does crazy bike rides she's <laughs> she she like it goes hard like super hard yeah yeah um i got another friend out on the east coast and she's yeah. always doing triathlons i got like there's people in japan yeah. getting swole so it's just a great community of people that just yeah. are working hard and i think it it just everybody's just supporting each other like let's work yeah. hard let's work yeah. out and yeah. it doesn't have to be running it's oh, it it's just moving it's, yeah. it's yeah. basically that yeah. and then and then like and then on the side is uh here in san diego we have a gym called kainga okay and um and i connected with these guys okay. uh like i don't even do jujitsu <laughs> but I do have a passion for like doing things primal, which I think running is primal and I think fighting is probably yeah, primal. Yeah, yeah. And so I respect the heck out of those dudes because oh, yeah. of the discipline yeah, it takes. Yeah. Um, and so I have a bond with those guys. Those guys are my family. Like, yeah, nice. uh, so it's just been uh, amazing these past six months to connect with all of these different groups. Well, um, yeah, yeah, definitely, you know, it's, it's great to make the connection with different people, you know, different walks of life doing different stuff, you know? Yeah. So it, it's awesome. Yeah. A hundred percent. So yeah, yeah there, it, we have an amazing community. Um, yeah. Truly blessed. Yeah. Definitely. yeah to, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But cool. So to the other side of your life, Amazon, you know, yeah. you know when I see I saw that commercial like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And, uh, I said, nah, that can't be him. Like not Hector, you know, they look like Hector. No, you know. And so, yeah. So the world want to know, at least people in San Diego want to know. Yeah. Not an Amazon commercial. <laughs> you know, how, how you got picked, you know, were you chosen, you know, you had some kind of special gift. You know, you would show to be an Amazon commercial. <laughs> yeah, so um, I don't think I have a special gift, that's for sure. Uh, but what happened was, um, so I, I, at the time, I, I was working out of, uh, we have a building out in National City, California, which is oh, yeah. 10 minutes south of downtown San Diego. Yeah, yeah. And we have been um, truly piloting electric vehicles at the station. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so I'm in charge, uh, or at that time, I was in charge of all of the on-road operations going out of that building. Yeah. So I think there was um, a corporate team that knew that we were piloting at my station. Um, and they were, um, so they put, so on a separate note, Amazon um, was coming with um, a, a sustainability campaign because yeah. that's what we're truly doing. We're aiming for shipment zero. Yes. Um, so they wanted, I, I believe, and I could be wrong, was that they, were co they wanted to come to San Diego to see the fleet, meet yeah. the people around. Yeah. Um, I think they probably wanted to meet drivers, and I'm not a driver. I'm, in, I'm on the management okay. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think, I think the goal was probably to talk to drivers, but the film, um, the producer of the, of the shot came and um, he and I just started talking and I think he started probing me with going like, Hey, you know, like, what do you think about nature? And I was like, man, I love nature. Okay. I'm running right. on the weekends. If I could be in the mountains, I'm in the mountains. Yeah, if yeah. Uh, uh, like if, you know, I've seen, some of the coolest stuff as, as I'm sure you have when you're on top of the mountain, Yeah, yeah. you see wildlife running around, yeah, around you. Yeah. Uh, when you look down and you see an ocean or a lake. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think yeah. I truly, truly believe that. Like, uh, okay. I can't say enough how much I love being outdoors, yeah. running, getting sun, all that stuff. And I think he sensed my passion okay. into that. 
So then he was like, okay. And then at some point he was like, can, can we kind of talk again? And I'm going to just set my phone and record you. And I was like, all right. And so again, I'm like talking about running and the mountains and the crazy challenges and this and that. And then he was like, okay, you know, I appreciate you showing me around. Thanks for showing me the vehicles. Da, da, da. And then I think the next day he was like, Hey, can next week we come and film you? And I was like, film me. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. So I believe it was the next week he yeah. came uh, with a whole crew oh, nice. and they filmed me for like four or five hours, all oh, kinds nice. of different ways that you guys didn't even see. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he's all, okay. Like, I think we got enough after that day. And he's like, uh, we want to catch you running in nature. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, well, in San Diego, I think probably Cal's mountain is probably the most popular yeah, yeah, yeah. trail. Oh, yeah, yes, um, so I was like, let's go to Cal's. Let's go okay. to where it's popular. And he's like, okay. And then we want to go to your house. And then I was like, let's go, let's do it. <laughs> so it kind of transpired like that. And then um, yeah. basically I was with them probably eight or nine hours. Wow. And so I didn't know how they were going to condense it to one minute, yeah. but I couldn't be more proud of the okay. one minute. Or, uh, yeah. than what they came up with. I think they did a, a heck of a job, and yeah, hopefully you liked it. Oh, uh, it was yeah, a fun, no, no, fun no, that, was, that was great. That was a great commercial. You know, I mean, that's all. I mean, you just ate me. You you own that. Did show that commercial all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, 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 no. I mean, yeah, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty cool. You know, yeah. So uh, here you got like how many like how many likes you got on YouTube or something like that over like yeah. I think today we were over 2 million views just on YouTube, let alone all of, I've had people tell me like I came on after their Peloton class. I've had people tell me I've showed up on the app on their game, uh, all kinds of network, the Cubs game. So oh, man. it's, it's now, it's now just becoming fun to hear how you saw me, you know? Um, I know, I know. Yeah. And they, I mean, that's it out big you, know? Yeah. And I, so I, I know, I remember that guy, you know, he, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, Anything I can do for, for anybody in the town, man. Yeah, I'm here, yeah. I'm here so for you guys. So, I mean, and the beer or me, the beer, the beer, you know, go to the, not take go to a bar or something, you know. Hey, you know, it's somebody that's probably going to pay for your food or whatever, you know. <laughs> and I'll do it for you. Uh, that, 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 that's, that's awesome, though. So, what your family and friends think about that? You know, your, your girls, you know, I bet. Like that daddy on TV? You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean they're they're in it. Um, so oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, just, yeah, I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're getting a big kick out of um, uh, yeah, just, uh, seeing it. We've caught ourselves a couple times. So uh, and they've had their friends like message them. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's been awesome. I've gotten um, again like I can't say it enough. Our community is freaking yeah. Yeah, yeah. through the roof. Yeah. Amazing people. Yeah, uh, and they've shown me love countless times and they did it again with the commercial it's, it seems like people really like it and and yeah, has exactly. said a lot of nice things to me so i i love i love everybody awesome that, that, that's cool that, that, that that's great you know so um as gabby you kind of uh, wind down so the next question is about you know i'm of course you're all about being boundless you know that one podcast you know that we want all about being boundless and not let your past or current situation or circumstances Stop you for overcoming, you know, to, so that you become boundless. So, what are your boundless motivation or your or your, or your more boundless thought? And then, just a few words, a few words, I might say, what is boundless to you? Being boundless. Uh, being boundless to me would be my analogy would be uh, not being afraid of the pain cave. Okay. Uh, which is. Just, to me is an analogy for a lot of things could yeah, mean um, yeah. don't be afraid to get uncomfortable. Don't be afraid to go beyond what you think is possible. Okay, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, don't be yeah. afraid to pass the limits you have. Yeah. Don't be afraid to be boundless. So to okay. me, they're all kind of one and it's all just mm. never peaking, yeah. keep pushing Mm -hmm. uh, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to stumble. Don't be afraid to hurt. Um, it's better you do it to yourself than have something else do it. And, and when that's something else, you have the tools from your pushing yourself to yeah. get through whatever the external factors are coming at you. Uh -huh. So 
and I love what you're doing. Um, I, 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 before I don't know, I don't think we caught it, but yeah. I love your, your page. I love how you're profiling local people. Uh, yeah. The whole boundless I'm behind it. hundred <laughs> percent big fan of yours, man. I love it. Okay, I truly you do. just, I just, just want one idea or just lead to somebody else, you know? Yeah. I got to give me one of those visors. Okay, yeah, definitely, you know, <laughs> of course, of course, I got you, I got you. Awesome, man, I got to get yeah. one. Well, like, yes, yeah, definitely, so, like, thank you, uh, Hector, for taking the time, you know, taking a moment out of your time just to join me, you know, on the Live Room Battle podcast, you know, and just able to share your story to hopefully to the world, you know. Yeah. Um, and also, I want to thank the family out there, you know, all of the family, you know, one big community, you know, for joining me on another episode of Live Room Ballast. Uh, living a life beyond a boundary you set on yourself. <laughs>